I'm Ellen Lockyer. Tonight we'll be talking to the two candidates for the new Senate District F. They are lifelong educator and Democrat Pat Chesbro and Republican Bill Stoltz, who served many years in the state House of Representatives. He's, um, each candidate will give a 30-second opening statement. Ms. Chesbro, your statement, please. Good evening. I'm Pat Chesbro, your Democratic candidate for Senate seat F. I'm, thank you very much for the opportunity to tell about my values and beliefs and views about Alaska's future. Yesterday I was knocking on doors and I spoke with a woman who said that she doesn't vote anymore and she doesn't vote because she believes politicians don't tell the truth and don't do what they say they're going to do. I'd like to be the legislator that changes that woman's mind by advocating for open and honest and transparent government. Thank you, Ms. Chesbro. Bill Stoltz? Uh, thank you. Thank you to the viewers for tuning in to try to become more uh, enlightened on the, the process and learn about the candidates. Uh, I'm Bill Stoltz. I have uh, represented the majority of the district uh, in the past, uh, officially, and all of it uh, throughout my service. Uh, uh, political boundaries are, are uh, something that uh, I don't pay a lot of attention to. Uh, we serve people, we serve neighborhoods, and we serve area-wide needs of the borough. And, uh, I'm gratified by the support I received in the new parts of the district, uh, carrying downtown Palmer and uh, the areas in the neighborhoods of uh, Colony High School and Seward Meridian and uh, some of the new gateway communities. Uh, it's really uh, not much of a leap for me to continue serving because I have served all the areas whether they could vote for me or not. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Now I'll ask a series of questions and each candidate will have 45 seconds to respond. So I will start with my, my first question, uh, Ms. Chesbro. Uh, supporters of the Susitna Watana Hydro Project say it will provide renewable energy for the next 100 years in the rail belt, but the cost of construction could be over $5 billion. Do you support the Susitna Watana Dam Project? At this point, I don't support it. I think we're in the, the situation right now where we have spent a lot of, we've, we've committed a lot of funds to large, large projects. And I think it needs to, we need to go back and re-examine the needs for those projects, the cost of those projects, and the long-term impact on the environment of those projects. So at this point, I do not support it. Okay, thank you, Ms. Chesbro. Mr. Stoltz. Well, I have please. supported the continued process. Uh, this year's funding was to complete the FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, and there are a lot of environmental hurdles of which uh, folks that don't always support me uh, uh, set up in the way of these types of projects. Uh, hydroelectric is a, is a long-term legacy investment. It's the ultimate uh, renewable. Uh, the politics and the, the funding issues are uh, kind of ugly on the front, but there's not a single community in Alaska that has regretted uh, having long-term sustainable um, energy sources for their communities. Not a single mayor, not a single business leader. Um, the politics of, uh, of looking at a big project like this, uh, uh, not always great, but uh, those are the visions that brought us other projects, but this year we'll, uh, we'll find out uh, more about the FERC energy process and, w process and whether or not it continues. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. My next question uh, for Ms. Chesbro, uh, where do you stand on the marijuana initiative? At this point, I am not in favor of the marijuana initiative. I believe that I am for decriminalizing marijuana. I am not for commercializing marijuana. I think that there have been uh, lots of problems in the states that have commercialized. And I think that at this point in time, we are not ready for that. Um, I heard on the radio the other day that in Colorado, they expected that they would generate $100 million to pay for the, t the uh, service of the additional services that they needed in light of the marijuana, and they have made like $30 million in taxation. So they're kind of looking at it again, I think, very seriously and considering maybe they, it wasn't a very good idea. So I don't think it's a very good idea for us right now. Thank you, Mr. Chesbro. Mr. Stoltz. Well, this will be a point of concurrence. I, I think government has a real p uh, poor dra track record of uh, being involved in any kind of enterprise and making it uh, profitable or an, a, net, uh, a net gain for the public. Um, Early on during the legislative process, I uh, brought up the issue with the mental health trust and asked them about uh, ongoing and, and new costs. And uh, um, I think I probably lit a fire under Jeff Jesse talking, and he brought up the term commercialization. And, uh, and when he looked at that, uh, 
this isn't uh, about legal marijuana. This is really more about bringing in a, an enterprise of which governor is a, a government is a partner, and there's just not a long history of success of those types of things. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. My third question. The Matt Sioux area is growing faster than any other in the state, yet good paying jobs are scarce there and most of the people commute to Anchorage for work. How can the state help encourage business growth in the Matanuska Valley? Ms. Chesbro. Well, again, you know, the state can't do everything and I understand that, but I think we need to find ways for small businesses to become larger businesses. I, I think one of the things that's happened, now I've lived in the Matsu Valley for 40 years, and I've really watched this monumental growth in the Matsu Valley, and one of the things that's happened is that the, the retail that has come in to help fill the gap of retail has been the large box stores, the, those kinds of things that we know from around the country. And I think we need to support the small business owners to come up with new ideas and figure out how we can make it a better place. Thank you, Ms. Chesbro. Mr. Stoltz, your answer? For small businesses, medium-sized business, the best thing the government, uh, including the Matsu Borough and the state of Alaska can do is, is keep more out of the way. Uh, government doesn't really do a good job creating businesses. They, they provide infrastructure, they provide a climate. We don't do a good enough job providing a good climate for, for business. And that's the largest complaint uh, we hear from businesses is over-regulation, uh, the cost of, uh, of uh, developing projects, uh, the litigation, many of the people who, uh, 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 and, and uh, I continue to support the Point McKenzie uh, project. I think that has a great opportunity for long-term good paying jobs. Uh, we're being litigated from a lot of the environmentalists uh, down from, uh, particularly some from Homer who, uh, who have cost us uh, what's uh, uh, reputed to be somewhere near $8 million up to that in extra costs on that project, which, which nothing was produced. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Now for my final question. Food security has become a big issue all over the state, a growing concern, no pun intended. What is the state doing and what can be done further to encourage local food production in Alaska? Ms. Chesborough. I think the state is doing some things. I think that they have done some farmland trust things to preserve some of the farmlands. You can't really blame a farmer who has his, his or her, all of their money wrapped up in their land. You can't really blame them for selling their land for, to, to have a retirement. But I think we need to be able to come in and, and provide that, that our farmlands are protected. But we also need to encourage these small uh, organic growers, for example, who are producing. We need to figure out ways that, that different people can provide to local businesses, and I know that that happens a lot to restaurants, and I think some of it's happening to schools, and I, I think we can encourage agriculture, and, and the Matsu Valley is the place to do it. Okay, thank you, Ms. Chesbro. Mr. Stoltz, your answer, please. Sure. I feel like this one is in my wheelhouse. I've made agriculture a priority, uh, and I've been recognized as the Farm Legislator of the Year twice just in the last three years alone. I've worked on a lot of those issues. My first bill I, I passed was the uh, the organic uh, labeling bill, which uh, our farmers desperate, desperately needed to legally sell their uh, their uh, and market their product as organic. Uh, um, I've worked uh, for the uh, Alaska Grown Products in the school lunch program. Uh, truly, that's a truly a nutritious uh, lunch program. And uh, the farmers in my district say uh, that having 52 customers uh, shopping the supply line of our uh, of our wholesalers. Uh, have caused Alaskan grown products to be put in those supply chains, which, which uh, elevates the, the opportunities to sell on so many other levels, not just the 52 school districts. So um, this, these are, uh, that's one of my largest priorities and will continue to be. Okay, thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Now the candidates will ask questions of each other. Each candidate will have 45 seconds to answer, followed by a response from the questioner of 30 seconds. Ms. Chesborough, your question, please. Mr. Stoltz, you have, I have a question about CAPSIS, uh, the secretive way that capital spending decisions or some capital spending decisions are made in the legislative finance committees. You've said that's the way it was done before I got here and I continued it on. How do you justify continuing spending public money with no public involvement? Well, I've, uh, I've offered to, uh, and I think we put it on uh, availability as soon as we received the capital budget from the Senate. Uh, I didn't get full concurrence from everybody involved in the process. Uh, I, I'd like to have more openness in the process, uh, but uh, we haven't had, uh, 
haven't had concurrence on that. Um, it's not an issue I have a problem with. Ms. Jesper, your response? Well, I, you know, I believe as you, you've been co-chair for four years of the, of the House Finance and you've been on that committee for, for a decade or so, I would like to see you move forward and be a leader in trying to get rid of the secretive nature of the, of the process. I'll uh, work on that in the Senate. <laughs> Mr. Stoltz, your turn. Yeah, I'll, your I'll question, please. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump that. I'll, okay. I'll, uh, that's something I'll promote in the Senate. Uh, I think uh, more information is better. That's, uh, I'm okay. a pretty open book. Okay. Your question, please, Mr. Stoltz. Here. One of the issues in the, in the Matsu Valley is our concern over, over fisheries, personal use, and sport. And this year, there's been a very concerted effort of a lot of, uh, of the uh, Kenai commer Cook Inlet commercial fishing engines to uh, get rid of our valley delegation. And we've seen activity of uh, some operatives placed there and that have uh, been pretty uh, critical of the uh, of the borough's uh, fishing game advisory committee that has made a lot of those gains. Uh, uh, just about every one of our challengers has gotten support from folks like Arnie Thompson, endorsements from the commercial fishing groups. Uh, can I get a commitment for what you'll do for the, for the Matsu Valley, notwithstanding where the support is coming from? Well, I think, the, I think that obviously we have a, a, a priority list of how we're going to do fisheries. We, you know, I understand it's subsistence, commercial, uh, personal use and uh, sport. I, I assume those are the things that I, I, I've heard that. I think that it's important to support them all. I understand that there are 280 people in the Matsu borough, small business owners, commercial fishermen who are, who want to make, get more fish too. And I, I would like to see us work together. I've heard of this called fish wars and I think that that's the absolute wrong way to move forward. I think we all need to move together. How do we get more fish? You know, I've heard of this uh, moist air incubation process. I think we need to investigate the ways we can get more fish into the streams and into all around so that everyone has the opportunity. Thanks, Mr. Chesper. Your response, Mr. Stoltz? Um, I'm just a little distrustful of th those groups and who they're supporting. That's the same group that's have uh, litigated to bring federal management into Cook Inlet to get a more, more uh, preferential treatment for commercial fishing. They've litigated to uh, close personal use. It's just not the type of support I want or re will really accept. Uh, I, I respect and have done a lot for the commercial fishing efforts. It's just that we have a contention in Cook Inlet and I just won't uh, put our, uh, our interest for personal use and, and uh, subsistence and sport behind commercial fish. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz. Ms. Jesboro, your next question. So, if you could build one large capital project, either the dam or the Knick Arm Bridge or the gas, or gas line, what would you build and why? Well, I think the, uh, the, the project that uh, I would support is the, the Kinnick Arm Crossing. I think what it has an opportunity to diversify the Matsu economy. Um, I think you'd see a stream of uh, a lot of the businesses that are, uh, face a hostile environment in uh, the Anchorage area would relocate. Uh, you'd see a lot of the heavy industrial that would become an important part of our tax base and not necessarily using a lot of the services like schools and police and other things like that. Uh, I think uh, that that would complement uh, the uh, the Point McKenzie incredibly. Uh, would make our prison more efficient, and I don't think it's one we'll regret doing down the road. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Stoltz. Ms. Jesper, you I, I guess I would have to go with the gas line. I think that that is. Um, I know that there's risk involved with gas line, but I think that um, I think that that's the one we should. That would be the first one that I would fund. I think that we have to be careful that we're not trying to fund too many things at this point in time with our. Uh, increasingly limited budget. Mr. Stoss? And the bridge, in, the bridge in Point McKenzie would both uh, incredible opportunities for potential refining, value added, uh, um, net liquefaction or uh, liquefaction, I miss those terms up. Uh, incredible opportunities would open up and uh, the gas line uh, would become a lot more beneficial to the Matsu Valley. When I, when I also support, I thought we were looking at a local project. Okay, we have one more chat. A question for Mr. Stahl, so you have time for one more from you. Sure. Um, there's three uh, budget cost drivers that are, that, are, that are chewing us up in the budget. Uh, K-12 growth uh, and uh, um, Medicaid welfare and pension obligations. Yet uh, we hear, we hear uh, criticism about the growth of the budget and uh, it's out of control, but just about all of our challengers have uh, promised to increase all three of those, uh, but either to organize labor or to different communities. Uh, 
how do those, uh, how do you think that uh, balances out and how can you promise both things? Well, I, I, I understand that the cost drivers are very significant. And um, I think that we, one of the things we talked about earlier was good jobs. Good jobs are going to help people get off the Medicaid rolls. They're going to, uh, you know, people are not going to, to need so much help. I think one of the issues that we have um, is that as we, as we have a larger senior population, it costs four times as much in Medicaid costs for a senior for, than it does for a child. So, you know, that is something we need to all factor in. But again, as long as people are able to pr protect themselves and support themselves when they get to their senior age, so we need to have pensions, we need to have ways that people can support themselves and, and move forward. I do think our better economy, better jobs for everybody, raising the minimum wage and the things that go along with it are going to be one way that we can get people out of those streams. As far as education, I think we can try to, to be as efficient as possible Possible, but we have a lot of, uh, I think somebody was saying that uh, it costs 50 percent more to do oil than it used to do for drilling, but I, I would suspect it costs a lot to educate a child than it w used to be too. Lots of challenges. So thanks, I think Jennifer. we have lots of things. Need to wrap that up. Uh, your response, Mr. Stone. Oh, just, uh, just a few more facts and, and just, just uh, add, uh, cautions on the table. Medicaid uh, in just the last uh, in just the last six, eight years has grown 82 percent. Uh, it's uh, over 20 years ago it was uh, uh, tw about 70 million. Now it's over 700 million. Pension obligation costs, we've put 6.316 billion dollars into uh, trying to contain the cost and we're looking at a 300 million dollar supplemental probably this year and it's though we have to say we have to be cautious about making promises on those three cost drivers. Okay. There are time now for a couple of more questions for me. And while we're on the subject, Ms. Chesborough, what is your stance on minimum wage? Can you explain why you support it? I support it because I think, first of all, it hasn't gone up in 11 years, or it's gone up 60 cents, I think, in 11 years. And I, I'm even amazed when I go to the grocery store and I see that a box of cereal is $5. And I wonder how people can actually make it on that. And I know that, um, I know that other things r respond to the the raise in minimum wage as well. But I think we are all better. I think it lifts all boats. I think small businesses would get more business when we have people that have money. And I think that we have fewer people depending on the government for help when they can make it themselves. And I believe that's what people want. I think people want to be able to make it on their own. Thanks, Mr. Chesbro. Mr. Stoltz, where are your stand on minimum sure. wage? Sure. I have some concerns about it. Uh, uh, I, I made a minimum wage at one time in my life, and I think I was in my early teens. Uh, that's what a primary is. It's a um, entry-level position. Uh, uh, there are very few, if any, adults making, uh, trying to make ends meet on minimum wage jobs. Uh, it's one of the challenges uh, of, um, well, it's, uh, it's been more political than it has been economically based. Um, and that's been unfortunate and both sides of the aisle of me that uh, I have a concern about uh, well, and, and losing more jobs and, and some of the entry levels, especially for the development of disabled action, some of those jobs may disappear as they become more expensive. Thanks, Mr. Stoltz. Now we have time for closing statements from each of the candidates. Each candidate will have 30 seconds for a closing statement. Ms. Chesbro? I think there's a clear choice in this election and maybe we haven't heard as much choice today as we, as we might. I am the, I'm an open-minded leader. I would like to have a chance to go to Juno and use my expertise to make a difference. I am for open and um, open processes, transparent processes, and no secrecy in education. Again, I'd like to, I'd like to have, um, I'd like to have the woman who said she doesn't vote to decide to vote because she thinks I'm honest and forthright and tell the truth. Thanks, Ms. Chesborough. Mr. Stoltz, your closing statement. Well, thank you again for the viewers taking time out of an evening uh, um, to watch this um, exchange of ideas. Uh, I appreciate the, the support I've received uh, during the past elections. Uh, I appreciate that uh, I've been able to accomplish quite a bit from the Valley. This year, uh, I want to uh, acknowledge and then apologize for the $50 million worth of road work that went on in the Valley this year because I had a, a large role in that. It's about about that's one of the uh, things that makes our economy stronger is good infrastructure and transportation and and uh, and we're looking for more of it in the in the okay. coming years. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stoltz, and your candidates for Senate F, Pat Chesbro and Bill Stoltz.